and welcome to Combat Ninjutsu. I'm Shihan Richard Van Donk, the senior instructor on this devastating self-protection tape. This video was prompted by a discussion that I had at lunch with Grandmaster Masaaki Hatsumi while I was in Japan. Because of the fact that there are many bogus teachers claiming affiliation to ninjutsu and to the Bujinkan, and because of our deep philosophical training, rumor had it that we were not a valid fighting system. Of course, to anyone who is trained with Grandmaster Hatsumi or true high-ranking Bujinkan instructors, this thought is really laughable. So after discussing the situation with the Grandmaster, he encouraged me to make the tape that you're about to watch. Here we will demonstrate a combat of ninjutsu style, showing how quickly and powerful that our art works in a real-life fight situation. Now while not everything is traditional in nature, the principles are still there and they're uniquely combined. I want you to remember that the scenes that you're about to watch already assume that the intent of the attacker is one in which they're out to harm the person being attacked. Now handling a friend that has had too much to drink is much, much different than handling someone who breaks a beer bottle and wants to cut your face with it. You have a right, if not a responsibility, to protect yourself and your loved ones from harm and danger. This tape is for demonstration purposes only and must be practiced by trained and skilled martial artists. Now be your best in life and enjoy the process because this life is truly a gift. We need to protect those freedoms that we have. So now let's go into the dojo and let's get started on combat ninjutsu. Welcome to the dojo training. There's seven major principles that we want to look at in this combat ninjutsu and the, and the aspects of training. And the number one principle is first is awareness. Your most important weapon, your most powerful weapon is not your body or your ability to fight. It's your mind. It's about awareness. There's a whole lot of things that we're not talking about in this particular tape, but it's really important just to give you as a background first in learning what is the situation, what's the psychology of the situation. All those things are going to determine really how you're going to handle yourself in a real life uh, fighting type situation. I mean, is a person armed? This is what you want to look for. Or is there, do they have ability to pick up a weapon somewhere? Are they unarmed in the attack? What's their surroundings? What's the intent? Probably the most important thing is what do they want from you? What's happening psychologically is very important to take into consideration. Most of the techniques you're going to see are against someone if they're pushing with one hand, if they're pushing with two hands, if they grab the whole of you punching with another hand, uh, defenses against kicks, defenses against double hunt grabs, defenses and then later against weapons where they're trying to cut you, they're trying to stab you, they're trying to hit you with a stick. We're going to go over these kind of different variations. First I'm going to show you step by step these seven principles so that you can understand the dynamics as we build them and show them and, and, and share them with you. But again, you really want to know what does that person really want from you? We're assuming in these particular demonstrations that the person really has ill harm or intent or has already established that intent in this combat ninjutsu tape. Intent against intent is very, very, very important. The seven principles uh, basically is number one is awareness. Number two is distancing your body, learning the timing and angling defenses so that you can set yourself up in a checkmate position, learning how to go inside and outside of the attack. And I kind of like it distancing like when we were young and, and as kids, or when I was young and as a kid, 
that well, I kind of like say, okay, you draw this line, and you cross this line, and then the fight starts. Well, I kind of do that in my own mind. I step back, I gain some distance. If that person steps across that with intent, I take whatever force and use that force against them to annihilate and to, to, to take away their ability to hurt or harm me or to protect somebody else. Number three is you've got to commit yourself. You have to be fully committed to the attack. Uh, once that person is attacking, you have to be committed to taking action. All of yourself and just and whatever happens is going to happen. You have to be able to do your absolute best. You're not going to be able to do technique number seven against punch number five because life doesn't happen that way. You have to be able to, to change and to adapt uh, whatever is going on. Number four is be able to use multiple hits. For every strike you're attacking you, you want to hit them two to one or three to one. Use multiple hits for the same uh, amount of uh, strikes that someone else gives you. You want to use your same limb many times. You may want to hit boom, boom, boom instead of just hitting one punch and then striking with another one because it takes more time. Uh, you have to do the unexpected. You have to hit in places that they're not going to see and they're not going to be able to, to defend against so easily. You want to use your body and the momentum against them. Once you have hit them, double hit them, you want to be able to grab a hold, take them to the ground. Destroy their body balance by, by maintaining your own. That's number five. If you take your hand to the ground, as I'll show you, their body will follow. You have to have flexibility to change your actions. You want to take them down. When you grab a hold of them, take them down. And you want to close that gap right away, not give them enough time or space. Then you want to finish, subdue them, or get away out of the situation. Be necessary, hit vital targets. And against weapons, you're going to probably have to hit vital targets. You might do striking, smashing, ripping, breaking, gouging. You'll see as we work on this particular tape, as I show you step by step. And then other instructors and students will demonstrate their uses and their aspects. Everything done on this tape is impromptu and not practiced so that we can show you this is just how it is and how it develops automatically. Okay, what you want to start with first is the awareness. When I'm looking at this person, I want to scan their body. I want to see how big they are. They're bigger than I am, stronger than, that, than I am. I have to secondarily guess this. I may or may not have a lot of time. If a person is striking, say, with a famous kind of right roundhouse type punch, hooking type punch, boom. The most important thing is for me not to be here. Versus doing a thing where I want to try to block this, where my timing may be off, I want to distance myself, even if I'm just outside of this punch or just inside of this punch. Now, his own energy and intent, he ran in to my attack. If we back this up slowly, he backs up, and I back up. I actually just step in here, just naturally, just stepping in with my body. He's bringing his energy in. Boom, he's already hitting as you notice, I'm already trapping the possibility of his next attack. I have my fingers where I could gouge, I could hit, I could stride, I can double lock, I can twist, I can take down. All these things, I'm still continuing, even with that same hand, hitting. My other hand is here, so I'm protecting against his leg, maybe coming up, trying to kick my face, okay? Trap, utilizing himself, his body, my own locks, my own ability to subdue this person, depending on the level of intent, to, uh, to completely stop his ability to attack me. Again, first I want that distancing, maybe. Then I may move in. I want to work on the ability of taking his body off balance. I have to commit myself all the way, moving in on this. For every strike, I'm going to hit him at least twice. Boom, hit him. I'm already working on something else. Some other piece, depending on the attack, I can use small parts of the body to control the whole body. So very easily. Still hitting, still working. Okay. Okay. Still hitting the box. Okay. Thank you, sir. Once again, I'm moving, I'm just stepping, I'm coming right in, I'm committing myself. I'm trapping his ability. I want to take him off balance as quickly as possible. Using one, two hits, boom. Hitting with his body, okay? I want to grab a hold and I want to destroy his body balance. Maybe even if it's real devastating, taking that action already. Boom, using a hand, boom, mark the hitting. Down, control. Put him into some, some position where you're subduing their ability to attack you. Very, very important. Then you need to decide from here to, to get up, to move, or to lead the situation. Fast, quick, and 
very powerful. We're going to take each of the seven principles and go through them one at a time and to share with you so that you get a good and proper understanding of the techniques that you'll follow seeing other people, other students and uh, doing the techniques. So the first is, I want to be aware. What hand does he have out front? Okay, Where, What weapons does this person have available? Are they, they have a possibility of shooting in with that front hand. Boom. They have a possibility of kicking with that front kick. It's going to take more time from the back but most people throw this lunging punch from behind. They may throw a kick from behind. Boom. Most importantly, I don't want to be wherever the attack is going to be. I may not know which one it is. So I, I may have to already trap. He may punch with this other hand first. Boom. I'm going to be here. Now he's going to come with this other attack. I'm already in a position to do whatever devastation that I need to do if this was a life-threatening situation. Okay? I could follow through the hit. Okay? But it's awareness that's the most important key. That's number one. Awareness because if I have the possibility to get out of this situation, I probably will. Okay, number two is distancing your body. It's most important not to be in a position where you're going to get hit. No matter what this person is going to do, if they're going to throw this front punch, they're going to throw the punch from the side, they're going to be kicking from a back a front leg or a back leg or whatever, I don't want to be here where I'm getting hit. That's, that's the most important thing to me is not getting hit. So I need to put myself into those positions. If he's going to throw something, I need to just be at that side no matter what he's doing. I need to put myself in a position to where now I can take this person down. So front, back, side, whichever, I need to just put myself in a position to where I can capitalize on it but not get hit myself. Now, in a fully committed situation, I may need to be right inside. I need to be able to commit myself, which is number three. Okay? To fully take care of in this situation. Point three is commit yourself to pinning on the intent. He's here, boom, I have to go. I have to go to the point. Not committing yourself is that this person's punching and, oh, what do I do? Now it's not, it's too late to start fighting. I need to be able to, time to, boom, commit myself. Already there. Boom, trap, choke, hit, smash, whatever it is that I'm going to be. Number four is principle is multiple hits. What that means is that for every strike that this person is going to strike at me, I want to do at least in my mind thinking two to one or three to one versus just one strike. If he's doing one and I go boom, boom, now I'm going to have to deal with this other punch that's coming at me. Yes, I may be good enough and maybe I won't be good enough. I mean, I'm hoping in all realities that I will. Another way to do this is that I would be boom, boom, hitting, I'm already hitting with this, then trapping, then grabbing, then taking down. Another way of showing this is that I may first come in here, then pop with this hand. Now I'm taking them off balance already with the same arm. If I strike and hit, I'm already coming down with another strike, maybe coming, getting the nose, grabbing because my hand happens to be there, protecting this hand, in case his other, his other hand is going to be punching me here, which is just going to offer me into position where I already have it. Locked. And control the situation. Principle number five is grabbing a hold and destroying the other person's balance once you've done the hits. Grabbing a hold, destroying their balance, and keeping your balance. Boom, I'm here. I'm already trying to take his balance if I can right away. If I haven't, he's still straight up. He still has strength and power. So I may grab a hold somewhere. I may grab a hold behind. I may push from the front. I may hit with my leg. Anything I can, even if it's here, just grabbing a hold. I want to take him off balance. Break the body balance because he's not as strong now. If I take his elbow to the ground near his foot, an interesting thing happens. His entire body goes down with it. If he's standing up and he's punching, and I just take his hand, taking his hand to the ground, his body goes to the ground also. Notice that I am following him to the ground. So that I'm there at the same time helping him hit the ground. 
which is principle number six, once that I have taken this person off balance, got him off balance, principle number six is taken to the ground and close the gap. What I mean by that is that if some reason I step in here, I take him to the ground, I may or may not want to be all the way up here. Because he has time now that he can kick, punch, whatever, boom, I'm going to have to try to block or whatever. But if I'm taking him to the ground and I go to the ground with him, I'm already in a position. Notice my elbow. I'm still looking for that. No matter what kind of thing I'm going to do for a choke or whatever, I want to go with him, land on top of him. Shown as another demonstration of that, he's in here, boom. When I take him to the ground, he's going to the ground already. You can see how the difference of the dynamics, just on that alone. I'll easily choke him out with my foot on his throat. Step number seven is make sure that you finish or subdue, meaning holding the person in a position where they can't move or choose to get away or get out of the situation. Sometimes you'll just want to, when a person is attacking, just do whatever you have to do to get out of the situation and to leave. Okay, it's not necessary to just keep fighting. Remember, it's intent against intent. So if the intent really isn't there, then don't hurt or harm somebody just because they're trying to punch you or even try to hit you with a stick or something like that. You do need to do whatever you need to do to be able to help uh, yourself and not getting hurt or not getting harmed. I'll show you what I mean by that. As a person's coming, again, basically the same thing. I'm coming in, so I'm taking them down. I need to either have them in some kind of controlling hole where they can't move or get out of this. Okay, or I need to just completely move myself away from their body and leave, especially if they're not moving. As a review of the seven principles, I'll show you this more in kind of a slow motion, going through one on one, on one at, a, at a time. So as a person, number one thing is I'm looking for whatever weapons. I want to be able to position my hands, my body, in a way so that even if they're throwing is that front first punch, I have the ability to, to take this offline from being able to hit me. I'm waiting as the other hand is coming in with that awareness. I'm distancing my body by moving in. I'm fully committing myself, trapping, at the same time, doing several hits, multiple strikes, hitting on different parts of the body. I want to grab a hole somewhere, anywhere on the body, whether it's in the back, front, body, uh, their clothes. I want to be able to take them now to the ground after the double hit. So I've grabbed a hold of them. I'm going to take them to the ground. I'm going to close the gap. I'm going to close the distance. I'm going to fall all the way down. I'm going to do some kind of submission hold to be able to control them so that they can't move whether that's even turning them over, put them in a position where I'm choking them out, or just stopping controlling this person's body, uh, or taking and moving out of the way or moving out of the situation once the situation has been taken care of. The first principle is awareness. I need to be able to aware of the person's size, their, I uh, have to size up their ability, say they're stronger than me, or they, they look like they're faster, they're quicker, what kind of advantage do they think that they have? What is it that they want from me? It's very important in my mind to think, what does this person want from me? We don't have a lot of time to discuss the psychology. We're already going to assume that the intent is already there to where they could hurt or they could damage me in this. And, but my mind is my most powerful weapon. My mind is my most powerful weapon, more powerful than my body itself. I need to be able to look at my surroundings to see how much room that I have around me. Could I be pushed? Can someone else come in? Are there other attackers? I need to, whatever that person is positioned, I need to know how, what weapons it could come from their particular attack. So they're standing position. He could come with this front hand coming at my face. He could come with some kind of kick or something at my body. He could come with a kick from a, well, a back kick. It takes a little bit more time to get there. He could come with a hooking type punch. Boom. Just a couple of the variations. I need to be aware by the position of their body so that I can have my defenses ready. A ninjutsu primarily we start out of a shizen or a natural position, not giving him any indication of, of my ability to be able to defend myself. I can immediately move into those positions, no matter what is attack is coming, taking myself slightly offline, already hitting, controlling, taking this person off balance, using that proper distancing. Once I have them off balance, get them striking, hitting, I can do whatever I choose to do no matter how devastating, depending on the particular situation, could rip, could gouge, could break, snap, control, destroy, even going to 
and is subduing, controlling, and holding on this person. To make sure that I have them in a position where they can't get up or they can't move, uh, and I'm in a safe position myself. So I can move away safely, no matter what. On this Combat Ninjutsu videotape, we're going to show you some dynamic action against several different kinds of attack. First, if a person comes up and they're doing just a one-handed push on someone. The other is they come up and they're doing a double-handed push on somebody. Then we're going to show if the person actually has a grab a hold of somebody with one hand. Then we're going to show grabs against both hands, defenses. Then we're going to show if a person gets here with one and they're going to throw some kind of punch or something off of that, that grab. Then we're going to show some things against different kinds of kicks. Okay, maybe a roundhouse kick, maybe a sweep against the leg, spinning, hitting, different kinds of attacks, maybe some multiple type punches. And then we're going to go through some attacks with cutting with a knife or a blade, some defenses against stick hits, and uh, disarms against those kind of things. Showing you a wide variety of different kinds of attacks and angles of attacks and how to quickly get that done. Fast, quick, it's got to be fast, quick, fast, and fast. Okay, and very, very devastating. You don't have a lot of time to hang out. The person's punching at you several different times, trying to hang out in here, trying to get away from these kind of things. Oh, sooner or later, they're going to be able to tag you. You have to be able to go from here, of course, boom, but they do strike you really hard in the body. I am going to need to, to finish this quick, fast, and very devastating to where they're out on this technique. But I don't want to put myself in that position. I want it to be where if they're throwing a punch, boom, it's already in here. It's already done. It's already finished before there's time for anything else to happen.
I'm striking is right here. Very devastating. out in the videotaping of this tape, our, our intent was really to show multiple hits and multiple strikes by the attacker. But it's so devastating, some of these hits, that we actually did them, the attacker still wouldn't be standing and be going down a lot quicker. Your idea is to actually to take them down with the very first shot. So we've had to modify some of the ways that we have done this techniques as you watch, so that the person that's doing the attacking here on the tapes is not getting hurt and damaged. Uh, very, very difficult to film these kind of actions in a way that they look like a real scenario without the other person getting really hurt and trying to teach you about this particular principle. Again, do not practice this unless you are with a very, very trained martial artist, maybe someone that's very skilled in teaching ninjutsu and doing it under safe conditions and doing it very, very slowly. So in looking at the ideas of uh, a person doing multiple punches on this, boom, he's going to be punching me again, so I have to be able to take whatever that's going on by him. Maybe this punch is going to be him taking him already taking the person out.
main factors in ground fighting is that a ground fight largely depends on how the two opponents go to the ground. So I'll find it well that we start on the ground and do escapes from various holds and chokes, but that is largely going to depend on how we get there. This might be something as simple as this. Now, from here I can mount him or any of that stuff, but I'm far much better off in this position here. It's difficult for him to do anything. He could try to grab me, he could try to kick me, but it's much easier for me to maintain this position behind him. Plus, as I push his head forward, it starts to stretch out the spine here. This is very painful, and it also compresses the trachea, which makes it more difficult for him to breathe. In this position here, I can just choke him out real simply. Smother him, suffocate him. I'm going to get very comfortable. I've got all kinds of targets here, and it's more difficult for him to defend against me than it is here. Here I put myself in a position where he can use these defenses. Let's take a look at that again. Breathe, and I just simply take him down. I'm already behind him. If you'll notice, I can be really evil and put this on his arm as I come down. Instead of just putting my hand here, my foot here rather. Be right here. I've got this taken care of. I got this taken care of, and I still got a free ride right here. Pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm already right behind him. Right on top of here. This is a better position in which to be than this is. Once again, here I have to deal with his defenses and weapons. Here I don't have to deal with any of that. Ground fighting's fun. I love washing around on the ground. But there's something you really got to remember about it. This guy might not be alone. I mean, it's all fine and well for me to ground fight with him and wrestle around if it's just me and him. That's okay. If I'm over here like this, wasting my time, and I'm getting all tied up with him, and he's got two or three buddies, this isn't going to last very long. Not a great idea to be here like this, and he's got my arm tied up. Meantime, his friend with the big steel toe boots is going to be right here. Not a great idea. However, if this looks something like this, where he comes in, I turn him over, I'm here. Get a couple of shots in. I'm not entangled up in his body at all. I can just take a couple of shots, and push him off, get the good to go. Good to go. This is the same place to be. I can't be attacked from behind. Now, if you do find yourself in this position, I've, I've talked to a lot of people, and some people think, well, they don't know how to work in this position because they haven't studied a lot of ground fighting. The, the thing of it is, is that you can do everything you already know how to do standing up right in this position. You can defend yourself against any sort of strike one way or the other. This can be right here. This ordinarily would be a defense against this strike into a takedown, but since we're already in this position, I can use this as an arm bar. If he tries to grab me, for instance, he might, might even grab my around my throat. Right here. This is fine. The same escapes that we already do standing up can be done in this position. He can strike. All I gotta do is remember concepts of evasion. I can be right here already. Other hand, perhaps. Just simply deflecting that from one side to the next. Notice how, in doing this, as he comes in, I'm also moving out of the way here. Other side. He wants to be right here. I just simply move right out the way to be right here, right all the way up here. I can do the same sort of grappling as I do here. He comes in for a strike. Ooh, I can be right here already. The same strikes. So it isn't really all that different from what we do standing up.
Thank <laughs> you. 